Hey, let's get started. So yeah, um, welcome to the world of Wacklecraft. And uh, it's Friday and um, yeah, it's Wacklecraft time. And I have actually looked into what we have left off last time and I could actually walk you through what I've done, uh, you know, off screen. And then we will continue from where we left off and um, yeah, keep on building our graph to uh, put the movie data into the database and then hopefully we can carry out some analysis afterwards. So yeah, um, I have my fan on because I just like suddenly feel very hot. Uh, I think because like I close all the windows and other stuff in my room and also like I have to close the curtain as well because the lighting is a bit weird sometimes because my webcam sometimes like do some auto correction in the brightness and it kind of make part of my green screen not so green and then yeah it would just like become a little bit awkward and I don't like it. So yeah, maybe I, I should get a bigger like fresh light so it kind of the light is more consistent uh, on me and the green screen. So um but hey, anyway, um I'm kind of like having a minimal like setup in my bedroom, which I'm happy to be like not too intrusive because it's my bedroom after all. Now it's like aka my office. Um so yeah. So right, so uh, what do we have last time? So let me show you the code. Uh, and also, hopefully Atom won't go like too crazy today, because sometimes, you know, I just go blank if uh, if I kind of click away, so I don't know why. Um, yeah, so um, last time, uh, well, let, let me quickly walk you through the code. Um, so, uh, we have, uh, so this is like actually our our code that is using the new uh, Terminus DB um, 2.0 data that, uh, you know, we have created a schema, so in the schema we uh, create uh, three doc types, which is um, the movie, the, the, the person, which could be like actor or director, and the genre, so there's like uh, three kind of doc types there. And for the movies, we would actually um, have a lot of property because this is the main um, thing that we have. So property could be like, who is the director of that movie, like, who are the like, actors that's acting in the movie, and genres and other like information about like maybe the runtime and year of release and things like that. So afterwards we have our schema graph built then we would uh, be loading the data. So this is where we left off last time. So we have the CSV which let me show you in the right hand side there. So you see that, uh, oops, it's, yeah sorry it's not very nice because uh, yeah I have zoom in super big. Okay. So yeah, we have um, this CSV that is I got from Cargo, and again my face is super bright because of the <laughs> of my big big uh, computer screen there. But anyway, um, so yeah, this is the the the, the you know movie, uh, IMDb movie database uh, data set that is actually like uh, from two thousand and six and two thousand sixteen. So this is like all the movie like information there. So we're gonna load them in, and we're gonna keep it there for reference. Uh, so you can see that we have like different uh, columns there. We have the oh sorry the yeah the wind is blowing in my mic already. Okay, so you can see that uh, there are the the rank the titles like these are actually like we um because when we do it in Waco we have to load in um all the all the columns no matter whether you you care about it or not. So actually like for each column name you have to basically assign a variable to it. Um, I think like in the next iteration, maybe I would think about like improving that. I don't know why, like, uh, yeah, maybe we can't choose the column uh, that we actually want to load in and ignore the rest. I think that's more, it would be better if we can just like ignore it. Um, but right now we can't, otherwise we will have an error. So it's uh, actually loading from a remote database, which uh, like remote data, you can do it locally. You can just change it into file and then this would be the file path. But the catch is that I'm running the uh, Terminus DB in the Docker container. So in yeah, so like in order to use a local file, I have to mount um mount this folder maybe like uh with you know mount it in a share volume with uh, the the Docker container, which like I'm not a fan of like really fiddling around with the the, the setup. Uh, yeah, I, I know how to do that. Uh, we actually have a blog post explaining how to do that, but I'm not a big fan of like fiddling with uh, the docker settings so eh, yeah um yeah so i just like put it on github and load it from there and uh yeah where do i put the url though yeah it's here 
So yeah, I use like raw.github.com, but actually you can just use the like uh, raw.github user content or something like that .com. That's totally fine. Because I have like some problem with my um, you know, with my firewall uh, before, so that I have to use another domain. But I don't know why it blocks GitHub domain. Yeah, I don't know why it consider GitHub not safe. But uh, well, I guess people have done something dangerous on GitHub before. Okay, so um. We have the uh, so let let's skip this this with us. This is the the bit that we got tripped over last time. So let's skip that. So we have data wrangling. So this is quite straightforward. We just cast those like integers into an actual SSD SX, uh, XSD is a mouthful XSD integer, which um which is like kind of the data type in um in terminus DB. So I just cast it that as that. I'm rating like uh, we re realize like I've made mistake that it shouldn't be an integer should be the uh, yeah it should be de it should be decimal so I think I hope that I've changed it uh where was that yeah because I have to change it in the schema graph as well otherwise when we insert data we will have problems so rating it is yes decimals I've changed that that's good so hopefully we, it will be fine. If not, we may have to load in the schema graph again. But I think it has been updated, so it's fine. Um, so yeah. Uh, so uh, about these objects. So this is like a bit, little bit tricky because like if we go back to the uh, cargo website here, and you see that like for example, shown right here, that you know a you know a movie can be like in multiple genres. So it's the same as the cars as well. A di director I haven't che checked whether it's like only one director. I guess most of the cases. Unless it's super unusual that you have multiple directors, um, but yeah, like for 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 uh, actors, you also like got people that are um, you know, of course, like in a movie, like a lot of movies, they will have like more than one cast. Like it's rare to have like a one man or one woman uh, movie, um, so and so you have like multiple entries, which is fine. Uh, you can have multiple, you can have like multiple properties, um. You know the same prop. Yes. Okay, it's the same property, but you have kind of like multiple of them uh, in your terminus DB graph. But uh, well, unless you set the cat catenarity to it to to make it limit, uh, otherwise it's unlimited. But like the thing is, like we have to break that list. Like first of all, break that string into a list, and then break that list into you know each of them is an object. So that's what I've done here. That um. So uh, I'll use genre as an example, but basically they work the same. So uh, for genre, you can see that we have, um, you know, we, we put in that like raw in there and then I do a split, which actually like a Python, the split that you put in like what character to split it on, the split on comma. And then afterward, it would give like a genre list object in Terminus DB. So this is, well, this is a string in Python, but this is like a, um, a list object in Terminus DB. And then you can basically put it in a member here that uh, you, you could extract each member of it and then it will become a uh, one genre object. I think you can think of it as like almost like an iterator that like split out the um, the, uh, the content of the list uh, if you really want to put it like in a Python term. But ex like it's not really like exactly, but you can think of it that way. And then you generate the, the, the ID by putting this uh, imaginary iterator, but it's not, um, into this like here and then, um, so ID gen, I think I have explained that before. So yeah, so this will be like your determine, like the, 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 the thing that you determine what a, um, how to generate the ID of it. So, uh, f of course, like for each genre, it will have its own ID. So you put it there and there's a prefix just to say that this is a, like a genre object and, uh, this will be the result. So you store it in here. So you store all of them in this, uh, you know, kind of like a reference to it in terms DB. And um, so, yeah, I, I kind of at the end, you know, I, all these like wangles, like, all these like breaking things down into object thingy. And of course, reading a CSV, I, I kind of like wrap them up with Waco and and then execute. So this again, this is not updated in the graph. Uh, this is just like preparing all these uh, variables. It's kind of like a query that will get all this variable like ready so uh so in a nutshell what i've done here is that we will read the thing from csv and then we'll do some wrangling so we have like data cleaning in python like in pandas uh, it's the kind of a parallel of what you do with pandas you know you change the cars like you know the 
as type to change the, the type you use you know uh, some you know join and other stuff like concurrent things like that to uh, create this ID thing uh, or apply you know um and then uh, you so like when you execute it actually it will just spit out a um a result that you know uh, you can put it in a tablet format so that you know each column will be each one of these so actually i did that i did that uh, it will be returned with that function and then it will be called like result there so it will be the result and then i put it into uh, this query query to df function which is included in the um the, the data frame extension of terminus uh you know uh, terminus db client um so it basically just like get this result as as you know split back from the server and i would just like turn it into a uh, pandas data frame and then after that you can you can of course like print uh you know the result oop can't spell df there and you know like you can see the head of it uh, or or let, let's check the columns that's more interesting so it's just like a pandas data frame. So you can just call the columns and check what columns it has. So and then maybe I'll just do it in one go because like otherwise it costs a lot of time. So what I gotta do is I gotta print out some like separator here so it's kind of like more readable. And then afterwards what I gotta do is I gotta inspect this genre object just because uh, I'm curious to see like what it looks like after all this like hustle of like getting the ID of it. So this is what I'm gonna do. So now I'll pop to the terminal and run this script. So I forgot what it's called. So Python movie. And yeah, I guess it's running. So yeah, it takes a while. That's why I like put in the print like together so I don't have to run it twice. Yeah, I guess I can just like, you know, save the result and run it again. But uh, you know, if I didn't save the result, which is the problem. Okay. Yeah, so now you can see that we have a... Oh, why is not printing the column? Did I not save it? Oh, I forgot to save it. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you have to, like, take my word for that right now. Like, I, I will show you later afterwards, and we just moved on when it got running again. So you can see that this is... Um, yeah, so this is a genre object ID. So you can see that, you know, you got the prefix there, the genre. And then you just, like, put in you know give it give an id to it so this is what it's doing so you can totally do this in pandas if you want to do it yourself but uh, i just like want to showcase how you do it in waco actually it's like uh it's quicker to do it in waco um if you get the hang of it because like in pandas you know you have to do a lot of you know um apply i think to 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 create these column um but now you don't have to which is good so yeah i would just like run it again so like we see it later but in the meanwhile i won't wait for it i would just like go ahead and do what we're supposed to be doing so uh so this is like uh, i would say this is the first step of preparing the data so now the data is not updated yet so if you have a look at their um a database so it's not updated it's still like for commit it's the same as what we start with um so yeah i haven't like do anything it's just like build a schema graph it doesn't do anything so um yes yeah, okay, now it's like spit, spit out the result. Yeah, so you can see that like uh, the, the column of like the result data frame is actually all these variables that I've created, you know, run genre, um, rank row. So you can inspect all of them if you want. You can like basically, you can or you can like save it as a as a CSV if you want to. So you can inspect later. Um, it's totally fine. I think that will look better if you do it in a Jupyter Notebook, uh, but I'm not right now, so maybe next time I should start using a Jupyter Notebook. But the thing is, like, because I would like to share this code, like, uh, online, so, um, the Jupyter Notebook, you know, like, um, sometimes the div could be a bit messy, if, but, yeah, but, like, some people prefer Jupyter Notebook, maybe I can do that as well. Um, so, yep, and now what we're going to do is that for this result, I'm going to continue because like now it's not saved in the, 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 the database. So what I got to do is I got to do an insert a query that is putting all these things in. So uh, again, what call query dot. OK, so it should be a bunch of insert. So for insert, I 
it should be the I forgot which one comes first so let me cheat a little bit and check it because like yeah I should have a documentation like ready at hand but like I forgot to um, oops um, yeah so inserts the the way to do an insert is to um, yeah have the variable first so what you want to, the object you want to insert first and then you put like in what um, doc type you want to insert it into and also you know label and description are optional but I guess I can do that um yeah so and yeah I don't like this let me hide this okay so uh, what I gotta do now is that I gotta put in less slot in our um, the maybe the genre object first because um, yeah because the movie is quite big so maybe I would slot in the easier easier one first so I got this uh, genre object ID there and I'm gonna insert that into uh, so it's gonna be the genre object the doc, doc type so uh, genre 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 scene schema just want to double check yep it's a genre doc type so I gotta put it in there mm -hmm. right oops it's a bit ugly there Cause, yeah okay oops yeah it's horrible okay so the label of the genre should be I really need to like uh, yeah restructure this with black a little bit so bear with me but now I would, I would run black afterwards to clean it up and a label would be um let's see your label should be the the name of the genre right so uh, where was the name of the genre I think it's genre raw yeah, genre raw. So this is the the string that have like we have written at the beginning. That you know, it's a uh, yeah. It's just a uh, yeah. I guess it's easier if you have like uh, a a data frame that you can work with. So uh, yeah, another advantage of using Jupyter Notebook that you can like basically print out the result like this one uh, in the first like in the previous cell and then you can kind of like look at all, all what, I, what I want to put in but otherwise you have to have a very good um, you know you have to have a very good uh, map in your mind that which one go to where so what I gotta do is I gotta yeah kind of break it into different lines because like otherwise it's super difficult to see insert um, so the second thing I want to insert will be a um, yeah sorry I'm a bit lost this code is horrible to read because it's like it's super narrow because I want to put like everything like in the screen how it runs but um, yeah, it's super difficult to find where I want to go so I gotta maybe put in the actors or which is person so yeah the person would be uh, first lock in the actors into the person yeah, you see that I'm like a bit person. I'll just type it just like otherwise I'll get lost in the bubbles. A label would be again like uh, it should be actress raw, right? Yeah. All right. So um, and add an insert, and this one will be the director. Um. This also is person, and the label would be uh, her. This one would be a um, yeah director raw. Right. So this is the first three. Okay. So now we gotta do the movie, which is interesting. Okay. So um, so the movies will be this bubble thing. And we do have. Oh wait, a second. Oh wait, did we forgot to generate a movie? Oh, oopsie. Oh yeah, so we forgot to generate. The <laughs> My bad. We, yeah, we forgot to generate the ID for the movies. <laughs> what have I done? Okay, so let's do it now. Let's do it now. So um, yeah. So uh, yeah, for the movie uh, object. So we do have to label the name. So like, yeah, we have to generate the ID of the movie. So let's do that and. I uh, yeah stupid me keep here so now you see like how I do things like movie object 
uh, ID. Yeah, or maybe just like object, and that's, that would be fine. And so it's gotta be actually it's gotta be an ID. I can actually add that in the wangling there because it's not like it doesn't need to do this. I don't want to. You can also put this in the wangling, you know, um, here, but. Uh, yeah, I just think that this is like worth to be its own thing because it's chaining so many things. It's a bit messy. I guess you can just like put it in there as well if you want to. You can just like you know, um, you know maybe use a dot n and put it in there. But put it in this is also fine. Um, okay, so maybe I'll add it here in the wangling to do the movie object. So it will be id gen, and the uh, prefix this will be doc movie, right, and then we have a list of identifiers. So I think that the list of identifying the movie would be um, the name and the director, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's quite unique. Like you, it's rare that you have like the movie with the same title and have a different um, director or the year. Like it may be rare to have like this movie with same name in the same year because people got confusing. But yeah, like I don't want like the two that actually you can like um yeah to distinguish it so that's what i gotta go with uh, is title and um the director yeah like of course like if you have a like have a unique id for that that's great you can just use that but um since we don't have a unique id for the movie here i think what makes sense would be the name of the um, of the movie and the director that's like, yeah, it's rare to have the movie of same name with same director. So I guess it's, it's basically you can identify, uniquely identify movie with that. So what I got to call this, so I got to call this movie up ID, right. So now I got to insert a movie ID. Finally, I have this thing that I want in here. Yeah, and then it will be a movie. Oops, it should be capitalized, and so it also got a label. It would be the name, which is the title. And what else do we have? We have the description, right? So I do remember we do have the description here. So we'll have a description for the movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can have like the description. Yeah, there. So, uh, uh, just gotta copy this description rule. That will be the description. And uh, right. So this would be a um. Up. What have I done? Yeah, this should be this one. And um, so that's the movie object, and it got lots of properties. Yeah, maybe I should like in the next iteration, it should be like you could put in like a list of property here. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna work, but like maybe you can put it, yeah, a list of property here. That's why it's become like just one object, which will be great. Um, yeah, so property would be um because right, i really don't like this chaining thing so much i really wish that you know i could just put in property here like property and then like for example i can have yeah if like i can have like maybe a list or a tuple of or maybe a dictionary of all the properties that i add that would be great then i can just like shuffle that in rather than um yeah, rather than like I have to chain it, so I'm not a big fan of chaining. So, uh, yeah, bit by bit we'll be improving. Uh, so that will be for next iteration. So property, it got lots of property, right? Uh, what was it? Yeah, I'm a bit lost again. Uh, director, movie genre, and uh, cast. Okay, let's do it bit by bit. So, um, th it would be a object property, which I forgot the syntax again. Um, yeah, because sometimes I inverse the order and it's bad. Yeah, so, so yeah, properties, yeah, so you can see the tricky bit here. So property is that you go to the type of the property first, and then you put in the object. So it's, 
is the opposite of the insert so that's uh, that's me really like mess up my mind sometimes and I think that I don't like so that's why I think it's good to have like maybe a dictionary so you have like a type and the actual property there so you just like put it in as a dictionary and that's what I gotta do next time when we gotta release the Python client or maybe I can try to implement that this weekend as well okay uh yeah property and we got lows we gotta put in a type so they gonna be director here oops where where am i okay director here and then the type uh the thing that we gotta put in will be a um ooh, ooh, uh where is it where is our object no the yep the director object id will be here um yeah i think here and a second thing will be what do we have like yeah i think we do have the yeah like you don't have to put in the label here i guess like uh but you could i guess you can put in the name of the director there did I put it in as the name? Sorry, like, uh, my fan is really making some noises. Let me switch it off, actually, like, because otherwise you would be like, you think that I bro into the microphone, but it's not, it's my fan. Okay. Yeah, like, it got the label, so I can actually put that in there. Um, if I want to, but, yeah, maybe I'll just skip it for now. I just, like, feel like it's getting too tedious. I just, like, added all the properties first, because it got so many properties. <laughs> you can see that I create a lot, so that would be the cast, and this one would be the actor Oops. with an S, right? And yeah. So well, the next thing would be the genre, and this would be the genre object ID. Uh, yeah, genre object ID. And what is the next one? Just try to be like consistent. Let's look for this. So yeah, you can see this is super narrow and super difficult to scroll along. Uh, hmm. Oh, it's called movie genre. Yeah, sorry about that. Movie genre and then year and runtime. Okay. Uh, movie genre. And then this is year. So this one would be the cards like the integer here nope what's that called uh year 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 we don't have year oh we have yeah okay don't scare me that like like that okay so it's like every year clean and we gotta have run time run time and this would be in minutes so yeah where is in time yet? What else do we have? We have the vote and the uh, yeah, the votes and the revenue. Yes. Uh, do we do the revenue? Well, we don't do the revenue like rating and votes. Okay, so let's do the rating and votes. So rating, um, rating. Yeah, the rating is the decimal thing that like tripped me over last time. Okay, so rating and votes. So we need two more. Um, rating. Yeah. Uh, and the votes. Right, let's uh, try this out and keep our finger crossed. And oh, before that, we have to put an insert in, right? So um, yeah, so so let's change this up a little bit. So this is um, data prep goes to this. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do the data prepped, and so this is the data prepped, and then what we will do is like um, return vacuum. A query and I would wrap it in an and what we'll call and it will have data prep and then we have insert and it will execute that okay 
yeah, let's try this. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. So, yeah, it's doing something. And, and, and what will we have? Oh, by the way, this print, I bet it won't work, but I just like want it to be updated. So, yeah, we'll see. Actually, like, let me remove this. Um, actually, I comment this out because this may give me a problem afterwards. But it seems like it's doing something. Um, I just hope that it will be updated and we'll be able to see it in the graph. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, so maybe, maybe we can still print out the result. Let's see what we have getting back. But yeah, not for this run. It's already running before I change it up. So we will see. Um, yeah. Oh, we forgot to put in the commit message. Uh, that's the habit I have to be, you know, used to now. So because we're updating the graph, we should have a commit message. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll use the default. Um. Schema for movie graph. So what I gotta do is, yeah, uh, when you do execute, you can put in the commit message, and yeah, you can put it here. It's not this one. So uh, loading data. Yeah. Right. Ah, oh, it's taking forever. Um. Yeah. So I think uh, that's more or less it. I really want to like be able to do some analysis with you all, but uh, yeah, it's funny that like I think the author yeah they, they, oh I got a violation oh my god, let's see what's going on here in the terminal and without oh without range why, huh. yeah it's always like I encounter a bug somewhere. Maybe like I got things messed up. Oh, rating. Oh, they spelled it wrong. That I spelled it wrong. Let, let me go here. Yeah. Oh, boo. Okay. My bad. Sorry about that. Let's do that again. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. So, so sorry. And yeah, I guess I'll just like chat with you while we're waiting. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, like. It's been going well, just development-wise, and um, I think I haven't done much um, things last week because, like, uh, we, like, I mean, like, Python client-wise last week because uh, the team is very busy uh, with getting Hub ready. Um, but I think, like, I can always do those like tiny improvement on those, um, on those like bits that, like, for example, I figure like I would love to put in property like a dictionary. Um, or little things that yeah, like little things that I found it like I want to improve it in a Python client that I could totally do that. Also, like today I'm thinking about maybe giving some shortcuts to people to maybe um, maybe preview what branches they have, what commit they have, so um, just to get ready when um, yeah, so people can basically control um, do do like version control with the Python clients, so they can do that without jumping into the cons out the console. That's what I want to do. Um, the next bit is, uh, but it needs to be uh, synchronized with the, the development of the front end is the visualization because the visualization is not back in yet. I really hope that's the case. But um, and afterwards, I would try to like maybe have some implementation in Python and hopefully we have, we can have it um, appear in the Jupyter notebook. That will be like very good. Or like you can export it as an HTML, basically like bouquet in um, Jupyter notebook. That's what. I really, really want to achieve, but it's taking very, very long because, um, yeah, we have our own schedule of developing things. Um, yeah, so basically that's what's happening uh, recently. And uh, regarding the Python client development, I, in the meanwhile, I have actually like spent some time doing some um, writing some Discord board. And oh, I got another violation. No, ah, uh, Jesus, what happened? It's complaining the same thing though. Did I spell it wrong again? Schema rating. Is it called rating in schema? That's why I always check. It's really annoying. Uh, 
about this one. Yeah, it's called rating. Uh, why it doesn't like it? Huh. Yeah. Okay, I may have to take this offline because uh, integer. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's the thing that I talk about because like it doesn't update the schema graph for me. I uh, did. I did. I do that here. Yeah, I didn't create a schema graph again. Okay, so third time a charm. Let's let's do that. Let's do that. And um, sorry, like I, I don't know whether you can hear it. Someone just sent me a message, but that's fine. Um, yeah. So uh, so recently I've been spending time to build a Discord board, and uh, so mainly it's for Euro Python <laughs> because I'm I'm helping out in Euro Python and I'm like writing something like for Euro Python, and I'm using uh the Kind of like my first time using a wait and uh, and you know async, async and await. So uh, I think someone asked about like where the Python, our Python client will support async. Well, which obviously now it it isn't. But uh, so let me know. Let me know if you have any like use case that you would love the Python clients to be able to support async. Maybe we can write a async extension to include like a uh, coroutine that people can do use the client in an async way. Um, yeah, so like give me use case because now I can't really imagine because maybe because of my background, I'm like data scientist, like so never, never uh, ever do async thing. So uh, until recently, which uh, I'm kind of like getting, yeah, I'm kind of li liking it, like uh, kind of understanding the event loop and the coroutine and this stuff. So yeah, so like let me know uh, if there's any use case I would like try writing an extension that is support for async. Um, that would be great. And yeah, there's a lot of potential in this Python client. There's like, so much potential to make it better. I'm like super excited. Um, yeah, and also like want to know what you want in like feature wise what you want in python i think there is another suggestion that maybe we kind of take these variables um so now it's like like it's not actually so it's a v so it's kind of a terminus db variable so it's a tech that okay this is a terminus db variable but it's like but it's kind of like awkward because it's not a python variable so if like if if it has a better interface that this could be a python variable and like when you get back the result it's kind of put it back in there instead of like a result that now it's like have a JSON. So like if there's a way, you know, maybe another layer on top that you could basically put in a um Python variable and then you could like save the reference to this and then afterward when you get back the result, it will be like assigned back to the result. That would be great. Uh that's one thing we could do. So it's kind of like this DF, it will become like the column name. So this V uh, variable thing it will become the column name. But um, but now it's like a table. So if you like, if you want it to be like kind of an an object that is kind of like um, they keep the the construct of the object. So if you need to like do another layer on top to do it, so it kind of like this um, create a DF thing here. Um, yeah, have we done? Oh, we have done, but we have still have foulage. Oh my god, what's going on here now? It's a string. And it's why it's still saying it's an integer. Uh, where is it saying that it's an integer? Uh, this is super annoying. So let me check. Okay, let me check this schema here. Um, can I have a look at the schema, please? Oh, by the way, like yeah, this is newer version, and it's uh, yeah. So this is not ver scaling very well because I've zoom in. So this is a bit awkward. No, not documents. Come on, it's a schema. And I uh, want to see the properties, please. Thank you. I want to see the rating. Is now it's a decimal. Why is it complaining? Oh, there's two of them. Oh, it doesn't delete the old one. Okay. So yeah, like uh, what I gotta do is like, I actually gotta delete this database and start over again. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So what I gotta do is like come here. I gotta show you how to delete the graph. <laughs> that's exciting, right? Deleting a graph. So uh, what you gotta do is I like, gotta manage. Oh, come on. Yeah, I got to manage. And oh, forgot. Like first of all, it's called movie and it's called graph. Okay, so go to delete database and uh, click that delete, and then it's just like movie graphs. Confirm. Uh, incorrect. Why is it lowercase? Uh, okay, let me check the code. What was the ID there? Uh, mm, mm, 
Yeah, like it's underscore maybe. Let's try that. Right. Yeah. Okay. This this is a little bit still, but like uh, when you sh when you showed it, it's it's a uh, uppercase. So when you type it in, it needs to be lowercase. So it's yeah. I I I would reflect that too. Like, cause the front end needs a lot of work as well, in my opinion. Cause uh, yeah, it's not very accessible. Uh, the, the console could be a little bit small. Um. So yeah. Okay. So let let's run it again and create a new database. So yeah, like if you look at the counts, uh, the console there, you can see that you know uh, I would just click on wherever, whatever it is. It's like uh, the query plane is like this. This is you know uh, even I zoom it in very big right now. It's still very difficult to see because the contrast between the the text and the background is not high enough, and yeah, it's not very accessible in my opinion. And uh, also, I would love to have a, a dark theme because I like dark theme. I also, my eyes are so damaged by staring at the screen too much. So yeah, and also like yeah, these things like why is it all cap if you if it's case sensitive? Because um yeah, it's more like a design choice, but it's not a user perspective choice. I think it's more like it's which one looks better? Yeah, of course it looks neat, but. Uh, when I try to delete it, and I forgot the case sensitivity of it, then uh, which is annoying. I would say so. That's another thing that we could improve. Um, yeah. So I hope that it runs. So like, uh, and then I could show you. I'll show you the result, and then next time we could start to do some query, and answer some questions. So maybe next time I'll do it in a Jupyter notebook, and yeah. Um, I don't know, like, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it would be better to do it in Jupyter Notebook than what I'm doing right now. Um, but what, uh, yeah, I just think that, you know, I can show the, the result, an intermediate result, and I can alternate it, and like, all these data science stuff, it's actually better to do it in a Jupyter Notebook than writing just a pure Python script, in my opinion, because I have to change things quite a lot, I have to like change my script like so the development is kind of like uh, dynamic according to the, the the steps and the data and all these things so you have to inspect the data from time to time and i think that's the advantage of using a jupyter notebook and whoa i got a lot of result back and it looks like it works so and let's go to our graph and have a look so let's go back to can i go back to the terminus db please yes okay um we do have well, it's not refresh. Let me refresh that. Yeah, I wish it's refresh every time you go back. Then, like, you just like show it. So, yeah, this is one thing that I don't like as well. So sorry, I'm complaining about the console so much, but I do think at some point, like, uh, the user, you know, uh, interface needs to be better. Okay. So we have a new graph, shiny shiny new graph. So we have three commits. We have a. Uh, so yeah, the Python clients create a schema graph and I will build the data like this is my commit message I feel a schema and I have a uh, load of data so now it should be there and yeah, we should have it now yes we have all the documents yay it's not the cow duck anymore it's the document and yeah you can see that we have the genre object which is like yeah all this thrillers and stuff and ooh what are these these are Oh, yeah, these are the movies, so yeah, like you can see the identifiers are a bit funny because I have to combine them, like the, the movie name and the, and the director name, and the description is telling you what movie it is, and yeah. I also like tell you the type description as well, which is neat. Um, the title. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, what else do we have? Got five pages. Oh, it's only five pages and show fifty. Yeah. Yeah, it's not showing everything. I think there's like a limit of what you can show, but but um you go go back here and you can basically query something. And so maybe I will just save this for next time, querying the graph and um yeah, because like we are running like almost forty five minutes and yeah, I think it's like already a lot of them, like, yeah, already a lot of things happened, so I don't want to make it too, too long. And 
we save all these query parts for next time, then that will be the end of these like movie um project. Then um yeah, if you have any ideas what we can do next, or maybe next time we can mess around with the commit and like commit mess like you know the, the branching and merging and stuff like that. So maybe next time we can uh, mess with that. Uh, mess with that after we close the uh, movie project so um yeah i will see you next week oh uh, by the way we have uh, in case you haven't noticed like uh well, if you're watching it like for catch up and things like we have moved the time of the of the program to be 5 p.m i actually have to update the banner in uh twitch i forgot but yeah we're gonna be like um 5 p.m instead of 4 p.m uh every week because uh yeah or every friday because uh we have the webinar in on in, uh, on friday right now so um yeah so i just gotta have a little bit of more time uh, to prepare for this rather than like after finishing the webinar and rush to jump in so um so that's better for both of us i guess so yeah um that's it and i'll see you next week at 5 p.m on friday five and five <laughs> bye